Hello Jason, Nicole has asked me to do something for you for your 22nd wedding anniversary. Does 1974 mean anything? Well, this video is dedicated to you from Nicole. And I'm a metal detectorist and I dig up lots of things including coins. And the silver coins and partial silver coins I have started turning into finger rings for various people and in addition to that on some special occasions whether it be a sad one or whether it be a really happy one like this um, a dedication video as well to go with it so I can show you how I make the ring so what I've chosen for you because 1974 was my question wasn't it? does that mean anything to you 1974 is the date on this coin it's 62.5 percent silver it's German 5 Deutschmark and on the other side it's got the number 5 and it's also got the eagle. I'm going to make this into a finger ring especially for you. So if you want to just go get yourself a cup of tea, sit down, watch this and then maybe Nicole can give it to you. So let's get on with it and I'll show you how I make it. Now the first thing we have to do is to find the dead centre of the coin and it's pretty easy if you've got the right equipment. This is a called a coin centre finder and we'll find the centre of anything as long as it's round. And you just draw a line on there, keep turning the coin around. see if I take that away now there'll just be a little dot in the middle that's dead center right what we're gonna do now is to make a hole in the middle right here we go gonna punch the middle of that coin out there we go that's out there we go that's the hole in the middle be obsessive but I'd like to just check and see how close I was to getting that dead center because it is done by eye that's 8.20 millimeters 8.26 millimeters 8.27 millimeters and 8.20 millimeters that's pretty good I'm happy with that right Jason next thing we're going to do is to make sure that your coin is nice and smooth on the on the press now on that side where the press went through it's lovely and smooth clean cut on this side it's slightly raised so I'm going to deburr that that's a deburring tool see bits of silver falling off I'll save those don't worry That's lovely. The reason we do that is when we start the first folding process that the coin doesn't split and we lose it. So now we've also got to anneal it. Annealing it is heating it until it's soft enough to fold without it breaking. And the way we do that is to put it in some drawers, make a mark on there with a Sharpie pen. Now a Sharpie pen is a a trade secret <laughs> is what you use to determine you've got the right temperature because it's just coincidental that when that vanishes the silver has been heated just to the right temperature if you overheat it you'll get a bubbling and a blistering and the silver starts to melt and the coin is ruined now you might be able to see on there the sharpie is fading 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 there we go and the coin is just going a golden brown color see that it's lovely and then we quench 
Right, we're going to use what's called a dapping block, first of all. The coin fits quite nicely into there, as you can see. But first of all, we have got metal on metal, so I want to make sure that I don't damage this coin for you, Jason. So I'm just going to put in there some petroleum jelly. Make sure the right side of the coin is facing on the band on the outside of the ring. So I think because there's a head and wings on there, that side would be the perfect side for the band. So I'm going to put that face downwards. And make sure it's level as best I can. And then place a steel ball bearing on top. And this is why. Here we go. First fold. There you go. That's come out very nicely. That's the first fold. So we'll just rub off now the petroleum jelly and we'll give that another annealing. Nice and level. At this stage, it could start to go wrong. Mind you, it could start to go wrong at any stage. But that's looking good. I'm going to put that in there. And then press it through on the folding cone. That's a 17 degree folding cone. And that's what will give us the nice angle to work it. Off we go. Right, I'm just going to stop there halfway through the second fold just to check the coin. Yeah, that looks good. Just making sure that's absolutely level so we don't get an uneven fold. And we resume. That's the second fold. Right, uh, that's looking like a ring now. It's very rough and just needs refining a little bit. So the readed edge is the one where you take the measurement from. And that's currently reading 12 and a half US. That needs to go about a size bigger before we go into the next stage. So anneal it again and stretch it once more. That's now size 13 and a half on the reeded edge and on the cut edge it's 14. Right, so I'm just going to do this a few times to get it exactly to the right size for you, size 12. It might take a few attempts to get it perfect. I think we're there. Okay, I'm going to use some 320 grit and just start filing off the edge of the rings on the inside. Just to make sure it's nice and smooth like I just did on the outside with the machine. This will only take four or five minutes. And there's a little bit of wire wool. That's very fine wire wool. Just going to put a bit of that on the inside just to smooth off that 320 grit. really starting to come up nice and now I think I just need to go to polish 
So I'm just going to get all the fire scale off there because it looks it's quite dull. I'm going to get all the fire scale off that ring and then give it a polish. So let's do that. Right, I'm just warming the ring slightly because in this jar I've got some jeweler's pickle which is for clearing off the fire scale during the production of the coin into the ring. It's absolutely deadly, utmost toxic is this and you need to be very careful so I'm taking that and just dropping it out in there quickly and that will just need 10 minutes and we'll come back to that. Okay, now time to take it out. I must only use copper tongs in this particular chemical and then we neutralise the chemical by putting it in some cold water with bicarbonate of soda. And then it's ready for the next stage, which is the polishing. So it doesn't look too badly already, but you wait until you see it polish up. Okay, I'm just using a Dremel with a polishing buffing tip on, on the end. And that is the polish I'm using. It is really, really good for polishing jewellery and coins. I'm going to take a little bit of that on my fingers. Just rub it over the ring. I'm ready to polish. Right. don't want to part with that now Jason. Just give that a rub with this cloth. They really are very very good cloths. I don't know what they're impregnated with but... Okay I'll tell you what now while I'm just polishing this off you're gonna make a cup of tea sit down and I'm gonna just put a little bit of video at the end with this on the turntable so you can see how magnificent it's come up. That looks brilliant. Happy with that. Nicole, Jason, I hope you enjoyed seeing how that ring was actually made all the way from being a coin into the end thing. Many, many congratulations on your 22nd wedding anniversary. I'm a bit ahead of you. It's 41 for me this year and I really enjoyed doing that for you. It was great to see the end result and like I said sometimes I find them hard to part with. But thank you very much. I hope you have a lovely anniversary and I'll catch you later. See you later.